Hello, I'm Kevin, KB9RLW, and I recently picked up, in fact it just arrived today, the Tentec R4040, which is a small QRP radio. It's a uh, Japanese company called U-Kits. Uh, they call it the H1B1, and Tentec is the uh, U.S. distributor of it. Many of you are familiar with it, probably are here because you searched for it on YouTube. I just got it today and I noticed a problem that I wanted to address. Here's the radio here. And uh, what I did, well I got it with the uh, battery that Tentec recommends for internal use. I've affixed it to the case. You can see the PC board well, is in there but I put a piece of cardboard in because when you put this together, the battery, this is hard to see, get the light just right, you can see that there's a gap right there. The battery is about 1.5 millimeters too thick to fit in the case, and as a result, when you put this together, if you put the screws in, you're actually bending the back of the case and still leaving about a one millimeter gap there. Now what I think happened is uh, I've read online that the R4020, the previous two-band model of this was slightly larger. And what I suspect is that somebody at Tentec uh, tried this battery, which they stock for their antenna analyzer, in a 4020, uh, found it to be a good match, uh, spec-wise, capacity and operating time, and uh, just automatically uh, in included it as the recommended battery for the 4040. But the 4040 being slightly smaller, that battery doesn't quite fit, and I've read about that from other people on, on various reviews. So I'm going to address that, I think. I've got a plan. I have a 3D printer that I built and I am going to make some spacers that will go on I really need better lighting um, open that slightly yeah I hope you can see it um, a spacer that will go on this metal edge of the case a little u-shaped piece of plastic about 1.5 millimeters deep um, and also shorter versions to go along this edge so it'll go on each of the edges all the way around and provide 1.5 millimeter um, filler for the gap and allow the case to be pressing against the spacers instead of pushing the battery against the PC board which I don't like. It's a surface mount um, most of the components are surface mount on the PC board and if you're pressing against it you're going to flex it slightly and uh, you don't want to flex a PC board with surface mount components, especially if there's going to be any heat involved. If, the, if you're taking it out in the field where it's warm uh, and things are going to heat up and cool down, um, that's not a good scenario. That's, that's a scenario that will lead to failure. So I'm going to address that. I will uh, include some images as I model the uh, part. In fact, they're probably going to pop up on the screen right now. I'm going to use Blender, which is an open source uh, 3D animation and modeling program, and I'm going to design the parts. And then I will uh, print them on my 3D printer, and I'll show you uh, some images of the printer running. And then I will show you uh, images of me fitting the parts onto the uh, case and reassembling it and the final uh, result. And if it's successful and it works well, um, I will include links uh, down below in the description um, to the parts. I'll, I'll put the STL files up on Thingiverse and those of you with uh, 3D printers or with access to a person with a 3D printer that also have this radio and have the same problem will be able to print out the parts yourself and uh, correct the situation. I'm sure that uh, Tentec will eventually realize the oversight and probably uh, get a, a deeper back or a different metal case um, with just a little bit more depth, just a little bit more space, or alternatively um, provide a different battery for future units that is a little bit thinner and, and will fit better. 
But this will be my solution for my new radio and hopefully will help out some of you out there that uh, perhaps have the same radio and the same battery and, and the same problem. So here we go. On to my evening project of uh, shims for the case on the R4040. Okay, so I've modeled the part in Blender, as you saw from the still that I put on the screen. And here the 3D printer is uh, making the parts. It draws a skirt around each part to clear the nozzle before it actually works on the original the, uh, part. And you can see the uh, four shims as it layers them up. I might have to widen them out a little. We'll see. The filament that the printer extrudes is 0.5 millimeters from the nozzle. So sometimes you have to design your parts just a little bit big, taking into account that the bead is going to be um, almost a half a millimeter. But we'll see. If they fit over the metal edge, I'll be happy. If not, I'll widen them by a half a millimeter and print again. Okay, so uh, about uh, 23 minutes later, the print is completed. There are the shims. I have to wait for the bed to cool so I can take them off. And then see if they fit on the edges of the case. Two long ones, two short ones. So, uh, yeah, probably another uh, 10 minutes and I'll pop them off and see if they fit. Okay, so here we have one of the shims and the uh, metal edge of the case. And the shim fits. Well, this is very hard to do one handed. There it is. I'm going to use a couple of drops of super glue to affix it, but uh, there we go. You can see the light. The shim fits on the metal edge just fine and adds enough of a gap that the radio should close up just dandy um, without the uh, battery pressing against the circuit board anymore. So I'm going to get these glued on and uh, I'm going to put it back together and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, results. Here's my radio. And, as you can see, there's the 3D printed shim. There's the one on this side, and they, they stand off the uh, case just fine. The case went together perfectly. The other side. The only uh, problem I had was, I've got to find some M3 countersunk uh, screws. <laughs> I had some regular M3s that have a regular head on them. The original screws are too short. Um, but that's alright. I'm probably going to put some feet on the back of the radio anyway. The important part is that seam is closed by this 3D printed part and you can see it just fits in there just nice and neat. Nice and neat there. And this part up here just stands off the uh, case just right. And as a result, I've got that internal battery that Tentex sells with it uh, being nice and clean. So, now I guess I'll have to power this thing up and start playing with it. <clears throat> I've got some build quality issues. Tentex should probably take issue with um, U kits. There's a, a gap there where the display isn't quite flush. The uh, Silk screening quality. It looks dirty, but that's because it was screen printed on there in a poor fashion. You can see it uh, here, too. The D is a little gunky. Phone is blurred. So, Tentec, I would suggest you take issue with your manufacturer and uh, perhaps uh, request or demand that they improve their build quality slightly. I'm sure that you can still make money off of it. But, uh, you know, those are 
those are small details for a cheap little QRP radio although now I'm a little more happy with it uh, with that internal battery okay I might do a review later um, but thanks for watching and I hope this has been helpful I will link the parts on Thingiverse with some photos of the results and uh, hopefully some of you can benefit from this as well 73 from KB9 RLW